uh, as a band, you three have known each other for a very long time. Can you tell me how you met and where Friendly Fires started up? Um, yeah, we, we all met at school, St. Albans, St. Albans Boys School. <laughs> uh, it's a public school. Ooh, public school, rich kids, blah, blah, blah. Uh, from, um, yeah, we kind of got together and it's relatively simple. We were just quite bored and wanted to start a band. Started covering uh, kind of Green Day and cheesy pop punk when we were 13 and then went through various guises. We kind of listened to a lot of like hardcore music and post-hardcore stuff, a lot of Discord records, acts, Fugazi were quite a big influence on us during our teens. And then it wasn't until we were about 17 or 18 that we, um, that we started getting into sort of electronic music and house and techno. And and then, how did Friendly Fires form? I mean, do you remember the reason of, of forming the band and saying, "Okay, this is the music we want"? There was, to make? there was, ne there literally was not a reason. It was it just, I can't, I, I can't even. Yeah, it was so long ago. I can't even remember why, why we started. It was just like, yeah, you play drums, I play guitar. We're the, we're the only kids in the school that do that sort of thing. So, why, why, the, you know, why, why not? Since you've been together for so long, um, do you ever get tired of each other? No, I kind of... I've, I mean, I've known Ed and Jack so long, it's like... We can hang out in a room and not speak to each other. It's a bit like kind of like having a brother or like a, someone who's really... Like a, like a family member, you don't feel the need to like talk to them all the time because you know each other so well, it's just, you can just exist in the same room. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's talk a bit about um, uh, the music. Uh, you, you talked about uh, already some influences uh, when you started listening to electronic music uh, next to the punk and post-punk you already listened to. Mm -hmm. How did that evolve into this uh, Friendly Fires sound that you have created? I think it was quite a, a slow, unthought-out process. Uh, I think the biggest influence was uh, the fact that we were producing our own music in our garage. And, and uh, like a, there was an electronic musician called Chris Clark from St Albans who produced his own music in his bedroom. And I, I, I kind of I think we were definitely influenced by the fact that you could do something on your own and not have to rely on going to a studio. You could create kind of great great music with just the most minimal and stripped down kind of pieces of equipment. Because I, I read somewhere that uh, your first album, which was a, quite a big success, uh, you recorded everything with one computer, one microphone, gaffer tapes to a mic stand. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Mm. I mean, that was out of necessity, or was that also some, some part of the, the whole idea? No, not <laughs> out of necessity. We yeah. didn't have enough money to buy lots of beautiful preamps and compressors and all those things that they have in expensive studios. Uh, yeah, no. It's, and I, I, I like the fact that during the first record, that's all we had because it, it made us focus on writing strong pop songs rather than getting getting like fetishistic about all oh, the warmth of that synth through that Neve compressor. Is, you know that that kind of stuff is you shouldn't be thinking about that sort of stuff if you if you want to be like a a successful songwriter. I think you know. I, I mean that's that's important. But first and foremost, you have to be thinking about the strength of the song. And, yeah. well, when you talk about uh, the strength of a, of a song, um, especially during your, your live shows, this is uh, something that you're, you're quite renowned for, for getting an audience to dance uh, mm. every show. Um, is, is that something that uh, just comes out of energy or is it you know, pre-planned in the music? Because it does seem that there is a, a theme or a beat or whatever you want to call it throughout the music. Um, I think when we play live, I think the way that we perform is we never try and imitate the record. I think we kind of hark back to our kind of slightly kind of hardcore days where it sounds a bit trashy and it's not played immaculately well like the record. I think, I think you know, it's, it's mainly about the energy and about us. Going crazy and dancing around on stage, and, and and being a visually exciting band to watch, I think that's important. I think uh, there are lots of great bands that 
perform incredibly well, but just stand there and you kind of, and after a while it just gets a bit boring. Like who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say. Ah, that's the yeah, That's too bad. Know. Yeah. But well, maybe the other way around. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, especially in like the house and the techno world and electronic world, there, there are loads of musicians that have amazing songs, but you know they just crouch behind a laptop, and it's like, is this it? Is this, have I paid my money to see this? I think you know. It's like how how different from the record is it? It's like, I think it's, I think if you're going to play live, you have to do something that's going to like capture people's attention. I mean, if I was if I was writing kind of very kind of electronic music, I would uh, I probably wouldn't play live because I'd just be like, I can't do this live. What's the point? I really respect what Boards of Canada did, and they, I think they played one one or two live shows, and they played all tomorrow's parties. But apart from that, they've never played live. It's like because you can't play that music live. What's the point? You're supposed to listen to it on a CD. 